Desmond Tutu writes, in our own ways, we are all broken. Out of that brokenness, we hurt others. Forgiveness is the journey we take toward healing the broken parts. It is how we become whole again. In our scripture today, they tell a story. In fact, the son in this story has to share what's going on in his life. He does something that we can't believe. He says to his father, after he's worked on the farm for a few years, could I have my share and take off? And he goes to the big city and does everything he can think of that none of his family would approve of in the city. But then he's out of money. And then tragedy sucks where he is and there isn't food to be had and so he has to start working. And where he starts working is worse than anything he had experienced when he was having to work for his dad. And so he decides that he needs to ask his dad for forgiveness. He decides he needs to return home and beg his dad to let him be as if he was just one of the poorest servants in the household. And so he heads back, and as he's approaching the farm, his father sees him and runs up to him and welcomes him and hugs him and wants to throw a party for him. And the son still says those words, the words he has been practicing that whole way home. I need forgiveness. I need you to forgive me because I have wronged you. I turned my back away from you. And the father continues to welcome him and throw a party. But his older brother, now this would never happen, is upset by the whole thing is upset by the fact that he took the money and squandered it, is upset by the fact that his father gives him a party. And so he's angry and refuses to go into the party. And his father again says, how could I not welcome him back? We thought he was dead, but now he's alive. He was lost, but now he's found. In the Book of Forgiveness, Archbishop Desmond Tutu and his daughter write all these stories about places and people and times when you need forgiveness. And he and his daughter believe that in order to truly forgive someone, you have to go through a process. And the first part of that process is to tell the story to tell the story so that you're able to forgive. And so he begins this chapter on storytelling by telling a story about him and his family. So in the 1960s, when he was having children with his wife, the government of South Africa decided that black families would receive this education that Tutu and his wife considered harmful for their children. And so they decided that they didn't want to do this, but the only way to make sure that their children grew up to know that they were beloved, that they were perfect as they were, was to send them to school in Swaziland. But they lived on the other side of Africa, of the other side of South Africa, and so you had to drive 3,000 miles across South Africa to where his parents lived with no hotel room that they could stop at on that trip. Now I want to tell you this because I just made the trip to California which is 2,000 miles. And for my mother and us, we could only do that in three days. Can you imagine 3,000 miles? So that's the entire way across the United States. And you're not allowed to go into a hotel. with a car full of children who are bickering in the back seat <laughs> during the hottest part of the summer. 
And so Choo Choo says that as they are driving and sweating, they see this amazing sign, ice cream. Mm -hmm. And so they decide to stop for ice cream. And he gets out and they all clamor out of the car and run to the door and he steps foot in and the man, the boy, behind the counter calls him a name and says, you're not allowed in this store, you need to go outside to the window. And Titu is so angry, he yells at the children, says, when you are hurt, you hurt those around you. He yells at the children and gets them all back in the car. And after he's driven now more and calms down, he says, you have to tell the story. You have to share with your family what the hurt was about, why he was angry, why they didn't get the ice cream. Because if you don't share the story, then they will think that they did something wrong, that they caused the pain, that they caused whatever prevented the ability to get ice cream. And so he shared with his children that just because someone thinks that you aren't worthy, that you aren't a child of God loved beyond measure, just because somebody else determines that you aren't important doesn't mean you have to accept their understanding. You can choose to own your own personhood. So he told his children this. But he told the story again that night when him and his wife had the children dropped off at school and were back at his parents' house. They again talked about it. And Tutu said, this wasn't even the worst pain that I experienced. The worst discrimination I faced under a car thing. But it still wounded me. And he says of this story, at that point in time, I didn't even know I needed to forgive that boy. But he begins this chapter because he wants us to know that even if we are never going to see that person who wounded us and hurt us again, we need to learn how to tell the story because by telling the story, we can start to release it and move forward. He lays out the things that you need to do when you tell us the truth. You need to tell the truth, and your story may change each time you tell it. So the story he told to his children may have been different than the story he shared with his wife when all those other hurts and pain and wounds were opened up. And when he told the story to us, did he add things in that we wouldn't know about deserts and mileage and what it is like to drive in a car with four children? He told the story again. That the first step in forgiveness is telling the truth. And then the second step, he says, is that if you don't tell the story, if you don't tell the truth, you risk your own hurt. You risk yourself being wounded. And you can't heal. He says the most important part of telling the story <laughs> is deciding who the best person to tell that story to is. To find a person who can hear the story, can empathize with you about the story, doesn't cross-examine you, doesn't ask you questions irrelevant to the problem, and creates a safe space for you. It could be a friend, a loved one, a trusted person. And then he says, the next step is a step that you do that may or may not interact with the person who wounded you. 
you need to consider telling them the harm that was done. So if you can face them in person, and this is how he set up the Truth and Reconciliation Committee in South Africa, that everyone got to tell their story, to share their wounds. And everyone also heard the stories. But he said that is not always possible, like how do you find a teenager who worked in an ice cream stand on the middle of the country? So he says, sometimes you write a letter, a letter that never gets mailed or does get mailed, sharing the story and the wound and the pain. And in sharing that story, you begin the first step of healing. You accept that what happened cannot be changed or undone, but you're now ready to make the next step. Jesus speaks a lot about forgiveness. He tells us that's one of the most important parts we have as Christians is to forgive. And the prodigal son, the story of the prodigal son, is a story about deep forgiveness. About how do you acknowledge pain that you have caused someone else? How do you welcome that person back who has caused you that pain? And how do you deal with the one who's not yet ready to forgive? What Jesus says in this story is that we can't help but welcome back those who are lost. They need a place where they can come and be found, where they can come and be given food to eat, where they can come and know that they are home. How can you not throw a party when those who are lost 